So Neil's earnings is coming up very soon, Thursday, June 6th. It will be before market opens. And then we are looking at what are analysts expecting? Well, they're expecting revenues of 1.444 billion US dollars and earnings of negative 0.305 per share. Now, if you look at the same quarter, all right, same quarter last year, what did Neil report? So this was the same quarter last year. Neil reported revenues of 1.554 billion and the earnings of negative 0.365 per share. Okay, so analysts are expecting revenue to decrease, but earnings, earnings per share to improve. Okay, so first I want to take a look at the revenue 1.554 billion versus the 1.444 billion. Now we do know from deliveries, Q1 deliveries 30,053 vehicles, which was down 988 vehicles from the same quarter of last year of 2023, which was 31,041 vehicles. However, what we can do is take an extrapolation of vehicle sales revenue from the previous earnings report. So this one is the fourth quarter earnings report of 2023. Vehicle sales back then was US 2,174.5 million with 50,045 vehicles, okay? So that comes out to around 43,000.4K US dollars per vehicle, times that by deliveries numbers, then you get around 1.305 billion US dollars in vehicle sales if you take the average selling price which is just a little bit shy of this number. So obviously we have other revenues to support this as well, okay? Now, before we come back to other revenues, I wanna go quickly look into first quarter 2023 results. So first quarter 2023 results, they, uh, revenues got revenues of 1,343.2 million. And then if you do an extrapolation with the vehicles delivered, Okay, 31,041. Then you also get an average selling price of 43.2K US dollars per vehicle, which also, if you multiply that by Q1 2024's delivery results, we have 1.3 billion as well. So both Q1 and Q4, all right, Q1 2023 and Q4 2023 numbers indicate that this month, this Q1 2024, we are probably looking at 1.3 billion in vehicle sales, okay? But what about other revenues from total revenues? Well, what's really interesting is in Q1 of 2023, all right, well, t extra revenues, other revenues was about 211.4 million US dollars, all right? And then for the fourth quarter, that number was around 234.4 million US dollars. So what that means is that you have around 200 million dollars of extra revenue from other sources. Combine that 200 million plus 1.3 billion from vehicle sales that we've estimated based on the average selling price, then we get to around 1.5 billion. So 1.5 billion is definitely gonna be higher than the 1.444 billion. Now, the big icing on the cake, which I want to talk to you guys about, is this, all right? This is really going to change everything, all right? And I'm gonna talk about losses uh, in a bit, but first, this could add a lot of extra revenue. So this was February 26, 2024. New entered into technology license agreement with 4.7, and basically, they are receiving a lump sum payment, all right, upfront license fee plus royalties determined based on future sales of licensed products by 4.7. So royalties are determined by future sales, so that doesn't apply, but there's a fixed upfront license fee. So how much is this license fee, all right? My estimate, uh, maybe 100 million? All right, uh, I mean, definitely, it's gotta be in the 100 millions to use somebody's licensing fees, right? Uh, some, someone's license. So uh, I'm guessing a at least 100 million. So we could 
Add that, 100 million, all right, conservatively speaking, that puts us at 1.6 billion. So 1.6 billion versus 1.44 billion, that's going to be a pretty significant beat in terms of the revenue, okay? Now, what about losses, all right? New uh, analysts are expecting losses to improve per share. So what do I have in terms of information on that front for you guys? So we know a couple of things. So R&D, of course, is a massive expense for NEO. All right. This is the biggest loss driver for NEO. And if you take a look, uh, yeah, loss, yeah, huge losses, right? 933 million. And this was Q4 of 2023 in losses. So losses really are going to determine this earnings uh, EPS number. So here you can see R&D is the big portion. Q4 they spent 559.5 million in R&D. What's really interesting is in previous quarters uh, earnings report, Neo's CEO said that they've pretty much done most of the R&D work. So R&D expenses are expected to improve. So that means that this will improve slightly, although they will continue to spend heavily on R&D. So it's probably going to be less than this, okay? It's probably going to be less than this number. Uh, also, we know some other information. So, for example, they have actually slowed down the uh, expansion of battery swap stations in Q1, mainly because they were waiting for the fourth gen swap station. And so they actually did not spend that much money on swap stations in Q1, which is very, very interesting. Okay, so that's money saved number one, which could help boost earnings per share. Money saved number two is store expansion. All right, they did not really place that many stores out, uh, deploy stores or, or, or build new stores in Q1. And they stopped publishing those numbers in uh, December. So we can also expect some savings from that as well. Okay. And also, remember back last year, Neil did some layoffs, and th those layoff expenses were back in Q four of last year so that's really going to help out with q1 numbers as well so all these really point towards better earnings per share for neo okay better better earnings per share for neo so this could also possibly beat uh, earnings ex expectation but the big big uh, thing that we don't know too much about Envo, how much money did they spend for R&D for Envo and that kind of stuff? We know that Envo cars are pretty much already finished, but they they had to build out the team and everything. So was that mainly expense in Q1 or Q2? So And also, the good thing about Envo is that they're using the factory, uh, factory number two in Hefei. So they're not really building a new factory for Envo. It's not really going to be much more expensive for them. And also their um, production doesn't really start until July, so they're still working on it. So I don't expect that to have a major impact on uh, the earnings per share, as to, so to speak. So if you take all these factors together, we could beat revenue expectations by maybe 100 or 200 million, all right? And then we could also beat earnings ex expectations with all these cost savings that they've done. So. That could mean that we have a very nice earnings report. Also, deliveries, you know, June 1st, we get delivery numbers, which will be absolutely fantastic. And then after that, earnings. So deliveries probably sent this much higher, and the earnings probably send this much, much higher, all the way up to $10 per share, possibly. So that's just my take, not financial advice. You can do your own research as well, but this is just my opinion, all right? As always, stay safe, stay healthy. Peace out.